one thing that God will turn his word amen. supernaturally and he will annihilate your enemy. Someone say amen. amen. It means that you have the time to understand. 15 cubits. The living water shall go above every mountain. Amen. Bible say, who are you? Oh, great mountain before Zerubbabel. Who are you, great mountain? Before Zerubbabel. He said, you shall become what? A plain. Amen. Listen to me. You are going to make sure that every mountain before you it shall be flooded and swallowed and covered by the living waters of God. Now get this through your spirit. God is going to give you mercy and favor this year. As long as you are chosen the truth and a loyal heart and to do good, I said God shall remember mercy on you. Number two, understand what I told you. God will make sure you shall not be ashamed. He is going to add. He won't subtract. He will add. Amen. He will add unto you the favor and the mercy. 50 years, not that 50 years, but favor and mercy shall be added to your life. Amen. God is good to make sure you shall not be destroyed. Amen. Your enemies shall be destroyed. Amen. They shall be swallowed up. Amen. Now, when you see these things taking place, and you see that you didn't do nothing, you only you know, quoted some scriptures. You only recited some few scriptures. Even Psalm 91. You just try to meditate on it. And miracles are happening, not because you are too special, not because God said, this is my year, that I want to make sure that I will exalt my word above my name. So I say, amen. amen. God is going to promote his word. So begin to develop the habit of quoting scriptures. Amen. Take the Bible and read it. John 3, 16. Make sure your mouth can quote it well. It's not difficult, is that right? Yeah. Quote it, Isaiah 54, verse 17. Quote it. Isaiah 54, 15, quote it. Quote the scriptures. And I'll tell you one thing, if you can't, you just, you just open it and read it out. In your room, walk and read it. You are programming the atmosphere with a powerful weapon that the enemy can stop you. Amen. You are just creating a flood. Every time you go to scripture, remember, pastor told you today, you are creating a flood against your enemies. You are flooding them. You shall float up, but they shall be swallowed in. Amen. In the days of Noah, Noah didn't go down. Noah floated, but all the enemies of God, they were hot. They were all drowned. It means you are going to call the scripture. The scripture will lift you up, but your enemies will be under you. Somebody say amen. amen. I said the scripture will cause you to float above, but your enemies will be under. Because Bible says you shall be the head. Those who shall quote scriptures very well by faith, I say you shall float over the waters Amen. and your enemies shall be drowned. Amen. You don't have to struggle to insult them no more. No, let the word work for you. Amen. God says, I will create a 15 cubit high above the hills and the mountains. I will swallow down your enemies. All the terrestrial for that have been troubling you. That have been troubling your life. I said, this year is the end of their day. So we say, Amen. Amen. Keep that in your spirit. And I pray that God will help you. Every spiritual mountain in your life shall be covered in the name of Jesus. Every terrestrial evil spirit, every diabolic beast will be judged by your God. And God will judge them, plague them, and he will plunder them for you. Say amen, somebody. Amen. God will not let you be ashamed. Amen. I said God will not let you be ashamed. Amen. He's making sure that what is so difficult for you, his mercy and favor will carry on. Say amen, somebody. Having told you these things, keep that prophetic in your spirit. I know that if you will simply allow the enemy to come in, he will let you know that, well, these are just words, but they are not necessary for you to trust in it. But listen to me, if you can believe what God says and deny the devil of what he's trying to tell you, you will see that you are going to break through. Amen. The enemy will come and change your mind. Did the pastor say this one? Did God really mean what he was saying? And if you don't take time, you will begin to behave like Eve. And before you see, you are selling your birthright. Before you see, you are losing it. And then December will come again by the grace of God and you have no testimony. It's, it, to live is good, but still live and have a testimony. Because test will come, but pass the test so you can have what? A testimony. No test person, you can have a testimony. And others are standing here. I thank God for what God has done for me. Last year, I was believing God. A few months ago, I was believing God to build seven houses. Now I have built 20 houses and you are jealous. Because you have not been exercising your faith. But if they stay at 20 houses, you to come and say 40 houses, beat them by 20. <laughs> All is that no competition. But make sure you are doing what God says. And his glory shall be upon you. Say, my somebody. Yeah. I know that some testimonies really provoke others. Some people just eyes, you know, go and sit down. I don't know who, who has houses. Oh, and God bless me and now I have some Cadillac. Powerful car there. Meanwhile, the other guy, he's struggling with his Toyota. So sometimes they feel jealous. 
But there's no problem. Just simply do what? Trust the Lord and obey what we are saying to you as God's clergy, as God's servants. And I tell you one thing that if you believe, it shall be well with you. Say by somebody. Is God not willing? Is God not willing? Is God not willing to help you? Listen to me. God is willing. God is willing. Sometimes, because of the way that we see things, sometimes we think, well, because we are not very faithful in many things, and we are not very holy in many things, and we fall short in so many areas, so well, it's not like God is willing to help us. Maybe we we'll have to be a little bit holier before God will think of us as a qualified people to help us. But God is always ready to help you. He's always ready. All you have to do is to acknowledge him and know that you are a man, flesh and blood, you are weak. He says, you see, his strength can all be made perfect in your weakness. When you let God know that you are weak, you need his help and strength, he comes. All is that don't be too much sure of yourself. Be sure in him. He is willing to help you. Someone say amen. amen. A man came to Christ, Matthew 8, 1 to 3. A man came to Christ, one leper. And this is what he said. The Bible said, when he had come down from the mountain, Matthew 8, 1 to 3. When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing. Be cleansed. Immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. It's the Lord. If you are willing, I know you have the power. I know you are the omnipotent. I know you are the omniscient God, omnipotent because you, are, you, you, you have all power. I mean, you are the all power having God. You, you possess all power, authority. Oh God, I don't doubt that. I don't doubt your ability. You are also omniscient because you know everything. You are all knowing God. And you are omnipresent because you are God who abides everywhere at all times. I don't doubt your ability. Mama, I promise, are you willing? Are you willing to touch me and make me whole? Jesus was touched with compassion. He said, young man, I'm willing. In those days, you are not allowed to touch a leper. They were seen as unclean. So when lepers are coming, they had to put some bells around their neck and make some noise. Unclean, unclean, so that every human being who is clean must run away from them. They were not even allowed to stay in the city. In fact, they had to stay outside the city. So they were always staying at the, around the city walls. But Jesus Christ, when he was moved with compassion, when this man said, oh Lord, I know you can, but are you willing? Are you willing? He said, yes. I'm willing. The Bible says he touched him. Something that the Jewish won't do. Something that the rabbi, the Pharisees, Sadducees, they will never do. It was an abomination. He touched him. He said, I am willing. Be cleansed. I said, the Lord is willing to touch somebody here yeah, right now. Yeah. It doesn't matter how rough your situation is. It doesn't matter how dark your sin is. If you call upon him from a true heart, he is more than willing to touch you amen. and to make you whole. Say amen, somebody. Amen. I am telling you that you are beginning a new year. And yesterday should pass away. This year is a new year. Therefore, before we're done with God, make sure you let yesterday leave. Amen. As I'm talking to you, the word of God is washing you already. Amen. That's why I'm talking to you, so that I'm washing something within you which soap can't wash. Amen. It's only the blood. Amen. Jesus is willing to change your life. He's willing to heal you. Amen. I say he's willing. Amen. He's more than willing Amen. to cleanse you. Amen. Willing to save you and bless you. He's willing to deliver you. Don't say he's willing. Yes. He's willing to deliver you from poverty. Amen. He's willing to deliver you from the same full situation. Whatever you can share with men is so much disgraceful that you can talk even if you find it difficult to tell a pastor. I say, Jesus is willing. Amen. And he will deliver you. Amen. This is your year and your time to make sure you, you let your faith come up alive and receive your portion. How long will you sit on and be crying? Rise up and let your faith come up high and receive the portion that belongs to you too. Amen. Say, my somebody. Amen. I said, not only Jesus Christ, but even the Father himself is willing. The Father who sent Christ to come and die for you, he is also willing and even more than able to do that for you if you can trust him. Romans 8.32, he says, 
Romans 8 and 2. He said, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Not some things. But I said, God the Father, who did not spare his beloved son, but gave him over to be killed for you and me to live. He said, if he gave him to be killed for you, how much more would he with him give you a car? A house, a dress, food, clothing. He said, come on, if I gave him for you to live with him, I can give you all things. Amen. Tell somebody, my God is willing. My God. Tell somebody, I said, the Father is willing to bless me this year. He said, this year, I, 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 will, I will soar into the deepest realm with blessing. He said, this year, I will rise higher. I mean, that, don't let somebody say it for you, say it for yourself. Don't you know there's a power in confession? If you say this year I will rise higher, this year, Pastor said I should say this year I will rise higher. Good, sit down there and say that one. Then you, you don't go nowhere. You must only, I only help you, you pick it up. This year I will rise. Say it until your enemies who are watching you, they are ashamed. The demons want to know whether what you are saying, you believe it. It's just something when you say, even, even they laugh because they know that, ah, see, we got him. This year, this year I will rise up higher. You cry, the one you are crying, because they know that they get. When you go outside, they, they say, hey, you want to go to the church, you fool, you fool us. Now you see, now they give you some seven notes, man. <laughs> because here we are shouting, screaming, hallelujah, 2015. They are outside there, they are waiting. I'll tell you the truth, they are waiting. Because this is not their territory. They are waiting so that when they can say, hey, so, is everything okay? You think this year to make it? So what do you say? You must make sure you talk back. They will speak to your conscience. Your conscience is the voice of your spirit. Your feelings is the voice of your body. And your reason is the voice of your soul. In that sense, they are going to speak to your conscience, your reason power. They will speak to your feelings. If you don't take time, you will just fall flat and you win. Your conscience is the voice of your spirit. Your feeling is the voice of your body. And your reasoning is the voice of your soul. That means of your mind. In that sense, they are going to use your conscience, your reasoning power, and your feelings to talk to you as soon as you step out from here. But you must make some declarations. Jesus Christ said, if you shall say, if you can say to this mountain, be that removed and be cast into the sea, and you don't doubt it, whatever you ask, if you believe it, you shall have it. If you can say, he didn't say if pastor will say it for you, or a bishop, or your husband, or your, no. He said, if you can say, it means there is power in saying, God the Almighty himself could not create nothing until he said something. But saying, darkness was upon the face of the earth. The earth was void and without shape. Darkness was upon the face of the earth. And the Holy Spirit, the whole time, was hovering upon the face of the earth, waiting for what? For a word. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, after a while, Bible said, now God opened up his mouth and said, Let there be light. As soon as he said, Let there be the Holy Ghost picked the words and transformed it into a light. God Himself never created anything without speaking. Check the Bible, Genesis. Everything He created, He said it, let it be. Let it be. It means there is power in the spoken word. There's power in confessing the word. It means you can sit down there and just think, oh, if I said my mind, it will work. No, no, no. God Himself, you are not wiser than God. Even God said, he said it from his mouth. The Bible said, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, God has ordained what? Strength. Because of his enemies, the avenger, so he can steal the avenger. Out, not hot, not in the mouth. He said what? Out. It means the words must come out. Even if you're a baby, ah, saying ah, hallelujah, God will work with it. Out of the mouth, not in the mouth. So if you sit down there, you don't want, you are too diplomatic. Say it. Say, well, God says, God says, you got nothing. It will be no matter. Demon, they're not afraid of you. Speak it. Because the word you speak, they are spirit and life. When you speak, the words will become a sword of the spirit. They begin to beat your enemy, become a flood. You, you, you are destroying your enemies. But you are too diplomatic. They, they beat you again. Some of you are supposed to be blessed more than what you received last year. God, 2014 was a double year of blessings. 7-7. Seven, seven. I tell you, that was a, a time, man, come on. 15 is a different time altogether. His mercy is given to you. That mercy means troubles are in the air. Anytime you have mercy, understand, the other side is in trouble. So mercy shall triumph over judgment. It means there will be a lot of diabolic judging. I mean, people will be accusing, judging you, criticizing you and there. But God says, I will show you mercy. 
and I'll give you favor. But before all these things, you to be alert and begin to speak the word. Verbalize the words. Take the word of God. Take it verbatim. Speak them out. Confess them. Begin to meditate upon that one. Quote the word. If you can't quote, you can't remember. Just open the Bible and, and just read them out. Read them out loudly. I tell you, something will happen to you. By the end of this year, you will see the salvation of God. Amen. Say, my somebody. Amen. Don't be too diplomatic this year. This year, demons are going to fight rough. And you two must fight. But the violence shall take it by force. Don't sit down there because they are very busy. But Bible said their time is too short. They know it. Beloved, thank God that he has kept you alive to hear this. And don't give them a praise. Bible said give the devil no praise. Remember that at the end of the day, God has dealt well with you. Jesus swapped with you. He made a divine swap. What I mean to say is that Jesus Christ took your sins and gave you his righteousness. So you don't have to worry because he had done something for you. You should understand and accept that. He took away your sins and gave you his righteousness. Not because of who you are, because of who he is to you. He is good and kind. Second Corinthians 5.21. The Bible says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. He made him who knew no sin to become sin for you and me. So that you and me might become the righteousness of God in him. It means he took away our sin and gave us his righteousness. So when you are sitting here, it's not because of who you are. Don't think of who you are. Think of who he is in you. And if anybody comes to you and says, hey, you sinner. Tell you, hey, I'm not a sinner. I'm the righteous of the Lord. He has imputed his righteousness upon you. So God the Father is not judging you by your mistakes. He actually is judging you and acquitting you by the righteousness of his son Jesus Christ, which has covered you like a garment. Someone say amen. amen. So there's a divine swap which you have. It means if you are going to keep this lesson alone, beloved, the manual for the year is that it's not going to be by your power, but God has done something for you that you must accept it. It is not your righteousness that it will help you to conquer this year. But as you depend upon the righteousness of the Lord, you are going to see the salvation of God. Satan cannot accuse you. Someone say amen. amen. Jesus took your death and gave you his eternal life. Amen. He took your death. That's why you are not dying. He has translated you from death to life. From darkness to light. So you are not dying. That's why you are going to live to declare the words of God. You are going to live to do something good. So you are after among the dead, you are not among them. They are going to be somewhere else far from your house. Amen. And this year, I pray that you won't spend money to be buried many people in Africa. Amen. I pray that God will preserve your saint and your euros. Amen. God will bless your saint and your euros. Somebody say amen. amen. So don't be afraid. Amen. Hebrews 2, 40, 15, he says, In as much then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death, he might destroy him who had the power of death. That is the devil. And release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So whatever the enemy plan against you, God says, don't be worried about it. Whatever they intend to scare you, to, to let you become afraid, and therefore you are in bondage thinking that, you know, any mistake I do, I will die, I'm afraid. Come on, don't be afraid when you're in the air, in, on the water or on the land. God says, listen to me, I have died. Jesus Christ, the Lord God, he died for you. He took you there and he gave you his eternal life. So it means that as we're sitting here right now, in fact, if even things should happen, you only fall asleep. You don't die. Christians don't die. Christians only fall asleep. If the body sleeps, it's the body. But it's not, we don't die. Our spirit, and so we live on and we live on eternally. Someone say amen. amen. But even the natural death is not going to come until you have finished your course. I mean, those of you who want to be 90, 100, no big deal. You got it. Is that right? Yes. You have it. I phone want to be how many years? 200 years, whatever. You got it. It means that make sure that you have the faith that Jesus took away my death. That means whoever says I should die, you are wrong. Jesus took my death and gave me his life. You can't take his life away from me. No juju man can take it from you. No voodoo man can take it from you. Only believe that, yes, what God is saying is true. If you believe, it shall be yours. Someone say amen. amen. Don't doubt. Someone say amen. amen. Don't doubt. Jesus took away your diseases and gave you his divine health. Amen. Therefore, that sickness hiding in your body that you can't talk about it, that sickness is illegal there. That sickness must be deported. Amen. I mean, that sickness must be removed. Amen. You must command it to live. It's, it's, that's, it's a guest. 
If a guest comes to your house and you don't like his behavior, what do you do? Exactly. You, that's it. That is a guest in your body. Wherever he's hiding, tell that guest, time is up. Slows with the hotel mama. Tell the guest to leave. <laughs> tell the guest to leave you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. That cancer shall not kill you. Yeah. The high blood pressure, the blood pressure shall not kill you. Any arthritis working through you, or anything your pancreas, kidney, lungs, any part of a bit from the crown of your head to the source of your feet, they don't have the right to disturb you. Amen. You have the power to walk them out of your body, save somebody. Amen. Because Jesus Christ, he took all your diseases and gave you his divine help. Why are you harboring it? You have harboring for far too long. You have been too soft without guests. And there are some guests, when you are too soft with them, they will take control. Even your own heart, they put their legs on your table. And they command your children to bring them tea. It is time for you to tell the guests, nonsense you. Get up here and take your bath and get out of my house. In the name of Jesus. I said that cancer must leave your body. I said that pain must leave you. Even if it's a pain in your soul, that pain must leave your soul. Whatever is a sickness in you, it must live this year. You can't live with it. Either you accept it and you make God a liar or you make God a true God and tell the devil to pack and get out. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 says what? He says, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement, the punishment for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. By his stripes, we are healed. Tell your neighbor you are healed. Put your hand on the shoulder of your neighbor softly and say, any sickness in your body, I command it to leave you right now. If there's any sickness hiding in your body, I command it by the power in the name of Jesus. Let that sickness leave your body right now. Anything troubling you from the crown of your head to the source of your feet, and whether it's visible or invisible, I charge it in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. Let that sickness die or get out of your body right now. You are a child of God. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, this year God wants to do mighty works with you and the sickness shall not share the house with God. Amen. You are healed. Amen. Tell your neighbor you are healed. Amen. Say you are healed. 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 And Jesus, he took your poverty and gave you his riches. I said, Jesus took your poverty. You are never to be impoverished. You are not to be impoverished by the enemy. Jesus understands that money is good. He is not scared of money. Jesus is not scared of wealth. No, Bible says he was rich. Second Corinthians 8, 9. Bible says, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, though he was rich, though he was rich, yet for your sakes, because of you, sister, because of you, brother, <laughs> he became poor that you and you and you and me through his poverty might become rich. Amen. Jesus wants you to be rich. Amen. Jesus is not glorified by poverty. Wearing a chalawate with holes doesn't mean you are humble. <laughs> so, so, me, I'm a humble man, so I don't want any expensive things. Beloved, Amen. your poverty doesn't glorify God. The fact that you think by not driving good cars or wearing good clothes it makes you humble, it's, it's a deception. If Jesus Christ should be here by this time, he would have been using also Rolls Royce. Because those, the donkey was the Rolls Royce. Either you walk or you sit on a donkey. And he had no problem with donkeys. Uh -huh. What I mean to tell you is that Christ himself put in the Bible, he says he became poor for you. It means it's a shame if you are just walking in poverty and say, oh, you know, poverty, you know, we are not material minded. We don't want nice cars and all these things here. We will just, you know, we, are not, we don't belong here. We will go. We will eat any food. We dear, hey. Beloved, don't follow such ones. They are liars and they are sick. Because these ones are actually, you know, they are a contradictory embodiment to the scriptures. It's, a, it's an insult and affront to the Lord. 
who even sacrificed his own life. The Bible says, though he was rich, it's in the Bible, though he was rich, he became poor so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. Why are you not accepting poverty? It is not your portion. In fact, in fact if, if you like it, it's okay, but we here, we don't believe in that, so you're in the wrong place. Tell somebody, if you believe in poverty, you are in the wrong place. Tell somebody right now. You are in the wrong place. God wants you to be rich. Tell somebody, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich. Tell somebody, that I'm in my heart of dollars right now. Listen, tell, say, it, say it well for the devil to be ashamed. You see, you see anytime in the church we confess, listen, listen. Anytime we confess in the church, God amplifies our language to the camp of the enemy. I have told you there are three regions we are operating. In the celestial regions, our voice is there. In the marine regions, our voice is there. In the terrestrial, here, our voice is here. It means demons can hear. God intentionally allows them to hear some things that will provoke them to anger. Because here his children are saying, don't you know that the marine spirit come to the earth, they empower people to be rich? I've heard some of them saying that they came to the end, to the land only to empower so even the homosexuals. They empower them to have money so they can increase wickedness on earth. And if you look on earth, go to America, homosexuals, they are rich. They got money. Where do they get it from? Satan pumps the money to them in a very supernatural way just to deceive mankind. Go to the mountains in Africa where you give them five dollars, they can make one million for you. D diabolic money. They are doing it. Sakawa in Ghana. No two ways about it. You go there, they give you the money, you can have all the money and chop and that in the next few years now. And what I mean is that Satan will give you blessing, but the blessing doesn't last. It's a bad one. God knows that all of us, we are looking for this gold, diamond, dollars, pounds, sterling, and euros. He said, but you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these dollars and pounds shall be added to you. God knows you need money. So if you are a child of God, obey him. Listen to me. The deal is done. Jesus said, I have done the deal for you. You shall be poor. You won't be poor, no. You must be rich. And I said, if all the years pass, you couldn't experience riches. This year, believe God. Just believe God. Believe God, this year is my year. This year, I said, the water shall go 15 cubits over the mountain of poverty. I said, this year, the waters of the living God, it shall go 15 cubits over the hills, sir. It shall cover the valley, sir. And I shall see poverty drown. Poverty shall be drowned. Poverty shall be drowned. And I will float on riches. I will float on the riches in the ark of Jehovah. I say you won't go down with shame. Money will not laugh at you. You will laugh at money. I command money to bow to you. Somebody, you know what? Because you don't have to bow to God. I say God must command money. And I will stand in the place of God. That money, in the name of Jesus, everyone that is under the sound of my voice right now, money, mammon, whatever you call you, yanky dollar, pounds, sterling, all the euros, are, and all the you answer, I command you in the name of Jesus, come bow down before them, bow down to them, because this one bow down to the living God. None of these ones are bow to you. They will not worship Mammon. Mammon, you will worship these ones. Because these are the worshippers of Jehovah. My God. My God. Lift up your hands to God right now. I am praying for somebody right now. That God will change your destiny. God will let you see His glory this year. As I have instructed you humbly and simply. And I will continue next week. But this is the short form of the manual. Introduction. One thing is clear. You are not going down. Amen. I say you are going over and above. Amen. Because you don't belong down. Yes. You are not a tail group member. Yes. You are not a beneath member. Yes. Bible says you shall be the head yes. and not the tail. He said you shall be above only. Yes. God said above only. Yes. It's an abomination to be beneath. Yes. It's an abomination to be beneath. Yes. You shall be above only. And I command the blessing upon you. Amen. 